Hey, I've got my friend Kyle coming over. He's a great saxophone player. I brought him back a Reed Geek from the NAMM show, and today I'm going to show him and you guys exactly how I use this tool to make my reeds play much better. Comment allez-vous, monsieur? Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Good to be back in the studio. <laughs> Jay Metcalf here. I put a link in the description below where you can learn more or purchase a Reed Geek for yourself. What kind of Reed care or Reed adjustment routines are you doing? Let us know in the comments section below. If you play synthetic reeds, of course, you could just remind us that you don't need any of this. But if you like saxophone tutorial videos like this one, be sure to drop me one of these right now and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Yeah, man, I brought you something back from Nam. Oh, Reed. not Vietnam, but now I'm like Reed Geek. I was asking the Reed about Geek. these, man. Yeah. These are... So Kyle uh, doesn't have a Reed Geek, and today we're gonna talk about reeds, and I'm gonna show him how to use his new Reed Geek, and hopefully we're gonna get his reeds uh, playing a bit better. So, man, show me what how you're using your um, what you're doing for reeds right now. Reeds currently, right now. Okay, so I've got this kind of dilapidated plastic bottle but it's an airtight container with like a little sponge in there i drip a couple of drops of water every week in there i keep about three or four reeds going in here at a time and how's that been working out for you it's okay i think i got a i'm i'm really crossing my fingers that i just got one of the bad boxes of van doren reeds these are uh java reds uh strength three and a half um, okay and what tip opening is your mouthpiece it's a seven Oh, and it's an auto link. Auto link seven. Super yeah. Master. So which read did you take out? Most recent one. I took it out at a gig a few days ago. Brand new. I've not done anything to and it. And how's it playing for you on like a scale of one to ten? It's definitely a seven. Yeah. And like for you, a seven is like you can play it on a gig. I can play it. It's it's a it's a gigable read. Can you play it a sure. little bit for us? <laughs> Okay, cool. And little, how does that feel for you? A little bright, a little buzzy. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I think that my setup does a lot of the brightness for me, and I like my read to kind of be on the darker side. Uh -huh. So this one's maybe already a little bit too... It could already be too soft. All right. So first, you just got to always do the back. I do it at every time I take a read out. I do the back. It's gonna change. Every time you take that reed off, you put it away, you take it out for the next gig, especially you going on airplanes and stuff. Yeah. Here I'm just applying light pressure, going back and forth. You can use any edge of the reed geek for this. And I do a few passes like this before every playing session on every reed. On the other side of the reed, I use the tip of the reed geek to adjust the rails. Often one side of the reed will be vibrating more freely than the other, and our goal here is to even that out and get both sides to vibrate more equally. put that back on you said it was a little bit buzzy mm -hmm. and sometimes that can be the result of like just unevenness you know like one side is kind of vibrating more than the other and that kind of gives you an undesirable response so let's see let's see what happens with this <laughs> Okay, is it still a seven? Uh, I would say it's gone up to an eight now. This is an eight read for me. It's, it's more free blowing. It's it's uh, caused the read to vibrate more easily. Okay, I think. awesome. As you learn yeah. to use your read geek, you'll learn. Ah, uh, if I take a little bit off of this side, I'm going to get that seven going to an eight mm -hmm. or an eight and a half. You know. Well, let's get a brand new read. Right. Hopefully, it won't be great, and yeah. we can try to get it from being so-so to like a, a much better Sweet. read. Uh, 
Oh yeah, so now you're putting them back in those sleeves. If you look at look at this, do you see how warped that is? They probably don't lay flat, yeah. No, I mean this is of definitely course, yeah, that's this is plastic. not <laughs> flat, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. So if you're putting your reed back in there, you're almost guaranteeing it it's not gonna be flat the next time you put it on there. I would recommend you get something like this one I really like. This is the uh, Van Doren Hygro case. So cool, because you could see the reeds inside. Yeah, I think course. that's a brilliant idea that they did. I got this. This is from a company, it says Bamboo. This uh, comes from Argentina, and this is like, check that out. Like that this is, is sweet. like a magnetized thing, look at. And this holds eight uh, tenor or baritone sax reeds, uh, and I'm loving this. Okay, so now normally when you take out a new reed, now that you've got a reed geek, you're gonna do the reed geek on the back of it straight away. But Absolutely. for the purposes of our experiment, you're just gonna slap it on the mouthpiece. <laughs> Okay, what number would you give this? This is perfect. This is like a four. What I'm gonna do, I think this rail here is a has a bit too much material on it. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off of this. I'm gonna come take a little bit off of this side too. And then I'm gonna go in here and try to really uh, decongest this center area. Of course, the first step is to flatten the table as always. And once I've done that, I, if, you know, if you run your finger up against that, you're gonna feel a nice, smoothness a little bit more off of this side so just putting light pressure here and you could see you know this reed geek is super sharp so with very light pressure you could see it's taking these ultra fine particles of that reed off so i'm just using this rounded edge here for this work on the rails and i'm going to take a little bit off of the other rail just not as much. You can use this edge if you want over here. That works too. Uh, I like to use this, this part here because you can really get in to the exact precise location you want to adjust. So now I'm just kind of decongesting taking some of these fibers out. If you imagine or even draw a V-shape around the heart of the reed, this gives you a guideline of where to take away material. Focus on the area below the V. Basically, I am taking off material there. So I'm avoiding this very central area here because this does something else. And I'll show you that in a second. So now if you've got a reed and it's really kind of too stiff, even if, if you get the rails uh, vibrating evenly and you take out this congestion uh, around the heart, but it's still just too stiff, what you can do is, is take um, some of the spine down. And with this black diamond, you've got this curved edge. This is a nice um, addition to this design. So you can use that. This is just slightly curved to kind of evenly take down the, the spine a little bit. You can also use the flat edge, that'll work. And I do this in a backwards motion like this. And let's be clear, it's, it's rare you're gonna take a four and make it a 10. I mean, I, I haven't really had that experience, but if you've got a seven you could, and, you, and you know how to use the Reed Geek well, you can make it a nine, uh, you know, or easily an eight. In, in, and you don't have to spend a lot of time. You saw, I was on it for, you know, a minute. Let's hear it. It's definitely way it, better. It than needs it was more before. though. It needs more, you think? I, well, from what I'm hearing, what you're well, hearing, tell me, tell me. 
it's a it's it's a drastic improvement from what we did before the Reedy. It, okay. it can it's it's more free blowing. I get that out of it. It was very stuffy before the Reed Geek, and now it's it's been freed up to vibrate more. Let me do some more. Let me do it. Play, play it again for a second, and then I'm going to do another one. What would you, what number would you give it? This rating? is up to a seven. This is oh, up to a seven. To yeah. A seven. Okay, great. All right, let's, let's see if we can make it an eight. Uh, yeah, just getting the Reed Geek and using it. A lot of people get these and they don't actually really use it or they only do the easy thing on the back, you know? Don't be afraid to work with your reeds. You're not going to ruin them. I, that was my fear in the beginning. Like, oh, I'm going to ruin my reeds mm. with this thing because I don't know what I'm doing. And I've never ruined a reed. That's usually all I'll do on a reed. I'll play it. If it needs something, I'll, I'll spend 30 seconds on it. And then sometimes I do a second you know, a second go at it. And then oh, usually yeah, I've got it, know. I've got it where I want it to be. Oh yeah. That feels a lot better. That's a, that's a solid eight. You just doubled that read from a four to an eight. Yeah. That's really, really remarkable. That's how easy it is to go from a four to an eight without even playing it myself. Congratulations yeah, on your I, new acquisition, man. And I hope you um, I hope you get to some really good use out of it. That should last you the rest of your life as long as you don't lose it. I'm not going to lose it. One question. Can you fly with a reed key? Yes, I fly with them all the time. I don't want any TSA scares. No, you can fly with it. Thanks for uh, yeah. being a guinea pig and doing this. This is Kyle Robert. Go follow Kyle on Instagram. He's uploading great content. You can hear he's a great player. It's at Kyle Robert Sachs. Correct. Okay. We oui, right. monsieur. We oui, monsieur. Dee-da-doo-doo-doo. <laughs>